Well, sediment sites are a problem for a whole variety of, type, of, of customers and entities and stakeholders. And typically there's multiple stakeholders. So it's not just a single client. It can be a PRP group. There's typically legacy contamination that's occurred at these sites through past practices that it's, it's unlike other types of contaminated sites. So you, you could have a whole group of entities that are responsible to some degree, which is part of the challenge. There are other entities like the federal government, EPA or Army Corps, they, they take responsibility for some of these sites depending on what type of site it was, if it was a federal facility. There's permitting, you could be under RECRA, you could be under CERCLA, state programs. There's many different regulatory frameworks. Typically sediments are some of the most complicated sites and they tend to be left to be dealt with later on. Between my experience and many of the professionals I've worked with, we've worked on many complicated sediment sites for the federal government, for private clients, for states, with a whole variety of different environmental settings and contaminants. But Geosyntec, we do work all over the country and in fact, all over the world. We've done sediment projects in Australia. We've also done them in a variety of environments. For example, working on a river in Massachusetts might be very different than working on a, a tidal estuary in uh, Florida. Two very different things, but we've got the experience to handle that. And I'd also say that in terms of contaminants, there's a wide variety typically. We also have cutting edge technologies that we're, we develop, including things for emerging contaminants like PFAS, which are becoming more and more of an issue in places. So we're uniquely positioned compared to our competitors to respond to changes in the marketplace and to sites that uh, need immediate attention that, uh, that come up for our clients.